And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat, and everybody on YouTube for some thralls. We're going to be playing another meta deck, so far so good, with Aggro Meta Tuesday, which I guess that's what we're doing here today. Uh, Twisted Gangplank looked good. Now let's try out some thralls. I'm thinking that thralls could be another really good deck against these Jace decks, right? Like, we're kind of looking at some different ways to fight Jace by being aggressive. Um, Jace decks could play... Aftershock to be able to blow up landmarks, but they probably aren't. But it's, you know, it's possible that they are. And if they're not, some 8-8s should be very fast, and 8-8 overwhelms are going to be good against, you know, playing 6 mana, get two three threes, or 6 mana, do 3 to 2 different things. An 8-8 overwhelm or 2 is going to be very good against that kind of strategy. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We're going to go ahead and play our uh, Frozen Thralls. Nothing too new about the list. You know, just playing good old Thralls. So here we go. We're heading on over to Ranked and playing five games over there. Yeah, most Jace decks aren't running Aftershock, but it's possible that they do, but probably not. Okay, so no Frozen Thrall. Now, when you're playing Thralls, you want to see the card Frozen Thrall in your opener. And some of those are, like, useful and everything, but nothing's, like, so useful that I need to keep it. Because your deck is much, much better whenever you have the card Frozen Thrall. Lissandra is like your secondary card to look for. Frozen Thrall, let's go. So we're around slow right now. Alright, so now this is where we want to draw like Avalanche or Ice Shard. Or Time in a Bottle. Taking lots of damage. I guess maybe this is the better time in a bottle round to go look for the four the deal two. But then if we play the if we play that play the deal two. Uh, see? You just don't have to play time in a bottle. You just draw the deal two anyway. We good. The Idol of the Monkey. Can you just do, like, any landmark? You know, just go and advance this one. Why not? Don't be scared. Ow. Okay. So I guess I'm going to... Talia this? Or... I, I would want to play the Time in a Bottle before the Talia, if we can, right? Because we want to get this countdown going first. So, because of that, I think oh, I we'll go Draklorn first. Oh, no. Draklorn doesn't have, isn't a prismatic, so it doesn't make a prismatic Frozen Thrall, so now they look different. Boo. Safety will cost the only thing that gives me pause there is if they have, if they're holding uh, Monster Harpoon, which is like their removal spell. I'd rather them Monster Harpoon the Talia than Monster Harpoon the Draklorn. And so I kind of want to, like, lead with the Talia, put that as, like, the bait for the Monster Harpoon, and then drop Draklorn. But we all good. We all good. Okay. So, again, the problem with playing Talia is maybe they Harpoon. I guess we just deal with that. Oh! I meant to time in a bottle first. Whoops. I am definitely meant to time in a bottle first. I was thinking about, like, should I just, like, pass and hold up, like, Fury of the North mana to protect this? No, we don't need a time in a bottle of seven cost right now. We'll just save the two spell mana, because we may need, like, you know, Frostbite, Frostbite, right? Like, we may need all that. We're only getting three uh, Thralls instead of four, right? Because, yeah, we only have space for three, but we can take three. That's fine. I'm just going to save spell mana. Three is perfectly reasonable. Through the coral. <laughs> Fight. Fight. 
All right, gotta keep that Nexus up. So this this puts us down to four. We know that they have at least one warning shot. And who knows what else to do Nexus damage. Yeah, Alessandra would, would have been so clutch. I guess I could look for Alessandra. Um, this thing heals. I'll probably skip them. I want Lissandra. That's scary. So that's one damage. Powder keg. No Lissandra. So our open attack's gonna kill them if they don't have four damage, but it looks like they got four damage. That's too bad. Yeah. Good hand. You know, good hand for them. They had a lot of early pressure, which you don't always see in that kind of deck. So. Good hand. All right, got a loss. I guess I should have kept the I should have kept the healing landmark. I should have kept that. Huh? Playing against some Soraka Tom Kench. Soraka Tom Kench can have landmark removal, so this actually could be kind of tricky for us. Because um, they, they could play, like, the three-mana Targon spell that either draws them Star Spring or blows up a landmark. And then, like, my damage-based things don't really do anything here. This could be a difficult matchup. Kinda of waste of mana, but good thing they're good thing spell mana is a thing. I'm scared of that three mana card. Alright, so we at least got one unit out of here, which slows down the Star Spring. Ooh, man. Table for one, if you oblige. Hey, is that dinner on you then? Man, do y'all think that they have that? Divergent Paths. I guess that's the name of the card. Do y'all think they have Divergent Paths? Alright. Let's... I guess let's try it. Hopefully not. Please no. Ooh, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. So I could have time in a bottle and then made sure that we got two 8-8s. Um, gonna just wait, though, because we got another Promising Future. And I can be greedy. All, all right, so we're going with they don't have it. Yeah. Oh, Talia. Stars hate heart by the power of the stars. Don't have to worry about our damage. We don't have to worry about our life total. Oh man, how greedy can we get? How greedy can we get? Is the question. Appetizers of brilliant 
Okay. Greed paying off. Greed paying off. Now we're okay. So that's good that they eat the the Talia, because now I have uh, count them all down, and so now that clears up all the space. We have room for all six eight eights. Let's go. Big swings. Big swings. <laughs> there, there we go. Thanks for eating the Talia, clearing the room. Wow, the greed is real. No divergent paths. We got there. Couldn't quite make it to the bed. Just gonna stay here for the night. What is that? Is this the same opponent? How do we get the same, this same matchup? Is Soraka Tom Kench good against Jace? Question mark? So we got Frozen Thrall. <laughs> yeah, yep, chat said the pupper's too lazy to sleep. Can't even can't even make it quite to the bed. <laughs> pupper. This is comfy right here. Well, sure. Gangplank is so. Ro said Gangplank Sejuani's top meta, not Jace. I mean, Gangplank Sejuani is probably the deck that's performing the best, but the type of deck that you see the most is a Jace deck. Whenever you combine all the Jace decks together, right? Like that's that's the kind of deck you'll see more often than others Ages right now. This world has such um, great potential. but we we're not necessarily that good into game playing Sejuani. We did lose to Gangs like that was our loss a little bit ago. Uh, it, um, they were super aggressive and killed us really fast. That was sad. Promising future. Hopefully no start no you know like at least we have we have two thralls here so we can kind of split up our promising futures. I will find the goodness in you, River King. Hope only provides temporary Let us Man, one mana short. One mana short. Cause I wanna I want a promising future of this thing again, and then also like time in a bottle and curator it, and then be like, bam, here's three eight eights. But we need one more mana for that. Pass is kind of cool. Nah, not that cool. The question is, like, which one a promising future? You're at six. I don't actually know what to do here. I don't I don't know what, what the line is. I guess I'll just do this. Just kind of see what's up. Maybe I should just time in a bottle plus curator this frozen thrall. Yeah, whatever. Right? Isn't that a yeah, whatever? Yeah, I think that's a yeah, whatever. Maybe we just do this and then save my second promising future for this one. So they're down to eight. I can still entomb their Thomas Kench and then get my Lissandra back. Appetizers of plenty. That's just like... Uh, Alright, so do I entomb right now, or do I entomb... I guess if I entomb right now, uh, Tom Kench is gone. Or do I wait, do I like let this happen, and then let them acquire taste, and then entomb? Arosa's now, entomb now? Okay. I 
I just want to play some aggro today. I didn't want to think too much. This is difficult to figure out exactly when to entomb. This isn't part of my aggro game plan. Alright, so Ice Shard blows up Bastion. Opponent concedes. We move on 2 and 1. Is that Vi? That looks like a Vi to me. Okay, so a deck, opponent's deck looks pretty viable. Probably going to be a Curious Shell Folk deck. We're going to keep the Frozen Thrall, and I think we send everything back. I could see keeping time in a bottle, like this is the one that like I could see keeping with the Frozen Thrall. But... IDK. I don't know. This is the one that's like a maybe, only because we have Frozen Thrall. If we didn't have it, we'd send it back. I'll still send it back, but I... I don't know. Because, like, just getting 188 is, like, fine. You know, is that... Like, that's cool and everything. But we really want more than 188. Like, we want our Promising Future, our Talia to copy. Right? Like, we want those kind of cards also. But then again, keeping that two-mana Predict helps you find those cards. So, I don't know. We're just going to keep playing Frozen Thralls and just kind of see what's up. What wondrous discoveries await I'm glad there's not a landmark destruction spell that costs three or less in those regions. Unless there is, and then be a newsflash to me. I'm cool with the pass. You cool with the pass? Are you down with the pass? Yeah. thing I like about Blighter Ravine right here is that that's four landmarks, and so then if we play like Talia next round, that'll be five landmarks. It also makes it really difficult for them to play like anything else right here, right? So they just wasted three mana. And so I'm also, like, all down for them wasting three mana. Astounding curiosities lie ahead. Come on, there's so much to see. My journey won't end until I'm through weaving it. Man, our thralls are pretty frozen. And Imagine Possibility does all the landmarks one round, so it doesn't matter that we don't do that first. So they take six, down to twelve. They obviously make that block. thing is, I think I just leave all these things in hand and let them prank. Like, I, I don't think I care if they prank to prank imagine possibilities. I don't think I really play anything. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. So we'll kind of see if they have trinket trade, I guess. Hopefully no trinket trades. Hopefully no more. Like, they've already played two of these, um, what are these things called? <laughs> oh, now they're all Glorious Evolution. Oh, they've already played two of those Otterpus. So hopefully no trick or trade. Yeah, if, if it is like Poro Cannon and stuff, we do have Ice Shard Avalanche. These are all cards. Like, I don't want them to make... Tavern Keepers, but like I don't really care if they make these other cards. Yep, there's Poro Cannon. Good 
Because they could definitely just pass. And I guess doing this before they pass doesn't actually matter. All right, never mind. They, they can they can pass if they want. Okay. Are they gonna? Oh man, are they gonna burn me out? I guess we block with Cassandra. Yeah, I guess we just block with Cassandra. What will you have? Oh, what am I doing? I should just play Curator, which I still can. All right, sweet. So I'll make you go to two. I should have just played that the first time. They did have another portal cannon. How are you dealing with some 8 8s? What, what do you got? Glorious Evolution Shell Folk can get really crazy, but so can a whole bunch of 8 8 Overwhelms. Yeah, so looking for stress defense. Yeah, I guess that's that's if Trinketrade hits stress defense, they can stress defense a couple of them. So no, they're not going to get that. We're not going to give them that. Yep, they didn't hit it. Alright, GG, three and one. We should do this more often. And there we go. Okay, here's our J stack. So hopefully no aftershock. It's possible. They play aftershock, but not likely. So we're keeping Frozen Thrall. The the champions are kind of a question. You know, we saw there, like, having Talia's kind of nice, having Lissandra's kind of nice. Um, I kind of think we just keep the champions. Yeah, I think we just keep all this. Because, like, Lissandra's another thrall, Talia's another thrall. And then if they do have uh, Aftershock, you know, we're going to get more thralls with these. So, if we imagine the possibilities... See that happening. Scout. I haven't seen a scout. Um, should I have Fury in the north then? I don't know. Okay, so this hasn't gone super well for me. The sun is shining. We should too. Yeah, this hasn't gone super well for me. Okay, so this hasn't gone super well for me. Alright, so they're still going to have the final spark. Considering going flash freeze, you know, I won't have imagined possibilities. So if I flash freeze, 
That thing dies. Talia's still a 3-5. They bolt the 2-2. Two, two. I take 2. They attack. I'm like... Cool, that's whatevs. Alright, I think we flash freeze. Because I, I don't, I don't think we're going to be leveling up this Talia, right? Like it's a three-five. Like I don't think I'm leveling it up. I think it's just a generic three-five right now. Another time of the bottle. Tavern keeper. Alright, so we'll be playing Tavern Keeper this round. Or so sorry, time in a bottle this round. So we're gonna predict because we want to see what's up. Tough choice. Either Promising Future or Pass. Um, Promising Future, of course, gets us another Frozen Thrall, uh, but we do have the ability to play the Clock Hand next round. But, like, if I take the Promising Future, we're basically just doing that. We're just doing Promising Future next round and then getting two 8-8s. Eight um, but then I'm doing, like, nothing with the Clock Hand, or we just play the Clock Hand and then it's just, like, an 8-8 eight, eight and a 7-7. Seven, seven. And I just pass. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to be taking Promising. I kind of feel like I shouldn't. Because now my clock hand, like, that just makes my clock hand do nothing. So, I don't, I don't know. They can still cast that this round. Yeah, they're grabbing Challenger. That's really too bad. You know, they get to double this up. They can have two Challengers. Man, that was such a good hit for them with the Remembrance. Man, this is like kind of like the only way we lose this game. Two final sparks. Man, this is like the only way we can lose this game. Now that thing has scout. Man, I should I shouldn't have taken that promising future. So I guess it's possible for us to lose to a J stack, but <laughs> I think that uh, over the long haul we're gonna do really really well against J stacks. But their hand was amazing. I mean, right, I, I shouldn't have taken any of those. I should have skipped and just maybe found, like, a Flash Freeze. Right? Because then... Or something else. I don't, I don't know exactly what, but I, there's just no reason to take that Promising Future. So all three of our eights are going to die. Man, that is crazy. That is... That round they just had hitting the challenge. Uh, man, that was crazy hitting the scout. So if I would have drawn that instead, that would have been a lot more useful, right? Because then I would have frost bit the Lux, and then I would have had to block it twice, and then we just had our one eight eight die, and then I still get my two eight eights. I guess I still I would have only had one eight eight. But I would have this an 8-8 eight, eight, and a 7-7. Seven, seven. Replicating the power spike. Firing! 
Okay. So I do think the Thrall decks are pretty favored against Jace decks, but as we know, as I say many times, even if you're favored in a matchup, you're not always going to win. That was a perfect hand for them. And so they won this game. But I've played a good amount of Jace against Thralls, and we played Thralls earlier against Jace. And that's It's very heavily favored in Thralls' side, but that was a crazy hand. So that's all right. That happens. Overall, three and two, and I think that like the three two is kind of about the floor for the deck. Honestly, I think that Thralls is really good right now. I think it beats a lot of the decks in the meta game. Um, I I think that I would consistently go three two or four one with the deck. Um, you know, so I think that we kind of showed the floor of like about as bad as you can do. <laughs> you know, uh, Thralls is just really good. It is. I liked our list. Looks solid. Um, nothing, nothing kind of new though. Cause I think this three and two is maybe the worst record we've ever had with Thralls, like whenever we've played it. But, um, any, but besides that, you know, we've always played in different metagames, but besides that, I think it is quite good in this metagame as well. All right. So that's Thralls. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave those comments and let me know about Thralls. If you're somebody who plays Thralls quite a bit, how has it been treating you? Or, um, you know, if you got other meta decks you want us to play or anything else, any other suggestions, or anything, leave, leave a comment in the comment section. But that's going to be it for Thralls. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you for the next video.